I'm going to have an inbox preview look at this model here, which is the Kinetic Model F5B Freedom Fighter in 148 scale. We can have a look here at the really nice box art of the Canadian, which I believe is the CF116. And they show us here our various countries that will be getting markings for, I guess, which it says the Canadian Air Force, the Hellionic Air Force, Royal Netherlands Air Force, Royal Norwegian Air Force, South Vietnamese Air Force, and United States Air Force, which um, I believe, I'm, I'm not sure about the Hellionic Air Force, but the Netherlands and Norwegian aircraft, I believe, are like the CF-116s, uh, which are Canadian produced F-5s and the South Vietnamese and United States Air Force um, aircraft are obviously American produced F-5s. I don't really know the difference between them but I assume there is little differences in, in them but they still refer to it as just the F-5B. And we can have a look at the side of the box. Really nothing special on this side here. And our kit number is going to be K48021. And unfortunately it's in one of these really flimsy boxes. And we do get some pictures of uh, the real aircraft here. And then some information on the side here about the aircraft. And we will pull it out and see, uh, see what it looks like. We've got uh, a massive decal sheet and our instructions. I believe that's everything in there. Okay, that's everything in there. So I'll look at the instructions first and then we'll look at the, uh, the decal. So we have the little like photocopied uh, black and white instructions. Again, I don't have a problem with these types of instructions. If it's going to save me money on the kit in the long run, I really don't care what the instructions look like. If they're really poor, as long as they're readable and usable instructions, I don't care if they're done like this. They don't have to be done on uh, super glossy, you know, like nice paper or anything. Uh, so we're getting callouts for color callouts for Vallejo model air. Um, I'm not sure what GSI is, but it's Mr. Color anyway. I guess it's Gunsy Sanyo or however you pronounce it. Italeri paints in there, which is really nice that they've put the Italeri paint brand in there. I like the Italeri paints myself. Um, I recommend them to anyone. They're a real sort of water-based paint, and uh, they actually give us some options in there. So that's pretty cool. And then Humbrol and Tamiya paints. But it's looking like uh, Model Air and Mr. Color. Mr. Color has got, like they've got everything that you need for this kit here. And then uh, really basic breakup. Like very easy to follow what you're doing in here. Like that whole thing there is <laughs> very basic. And uh, more pieces here are intakes. So you get a full length intake in there and our cockpit area here doesn't look like there's much going on with the seats like they're pretty empty but I believe the way these seats are the dude like wears his parachute and then he sits on it as a seat I think that's how these aircraft were I I'm not positive positive. and then we have uh, boarding ladders on here in our glass work. So this is basically uh, doing your front end first and then we go into our our rear section here. It looks like we do have posable um, like the flaps, the slats and everything there. And then plugging in our nose section to the mid section. And then we go into uh, armaments or like our fuel tanks and our pylons. And it shows us, uh, I guess, recommended where we put the armaments, if you're going to put armaments on it. 
and this is our so our common markings oh this is just coloring this is common coloring it's telling us what to paint all the oh, that's a really nice touch showing us how to uh, paint all the little various pieces on there that's a really nice touch by them and so here's our uh, well, that was a little tiny photo etch that came out there but so here's our uh, subjects that we're going to have the uh, tactical training wing here US Air Force 1973 which is a nice enough looking vehicle and then we've got another training wing from a different group and another later one from 1982 another one from Florida that's kind of an uh, Inter-American Air Force Academy that's a uh, quite an interesting machine there and then here we have the uh, the Scotia Tigers in uh, Vietnam or South Vietnam I should say 1966 and the CF-5D which uh, is an aggressor camouflage 1986 it goes up to these are really uh, beautiful aircraft how they've done the, the complete uh, wraparound camouflage with the false canopy really nice then we have another uh, aggressor from 86 which is in a different uh, I guess it's a different scheme and then you get another one so there's all kinds of various different schemes for the uh, Canadian aggressors in here they're all from 1986 it looks like and then you get one in the uh, like the aluminum or uh, silver dope I call it 1983 which is a nice looking machine and the Netherlands Air Force late 70s early 80s is the only information we're getting on it and they just call it an NF5B and another one from the Netherlands mid 80s with a kind of a different little tactical scheme to it and another Netherlands one so you quite a few options for for like each Air Force and then the Norwegian one F5B they call it and another one from the early 70s it's saying and the Greek Air Force from 1997 so this would be quite a late machine and it's the same aircraft Greek Air Force oh this would have been its original paint scheme from 1966 I guess another one from 98 and then uh, South Vietnamese Air Force another one from 1969 so you've got a ton of options I mean <laughs> they should have given this should have been a two-in-one kit because if you're gonna have a heck of a time picking out which one you actually want to do obviously I'm I'm kind of biased towards doing a Canadian one so the decals look awesome they look excellent they're glossy um, I wouldn't say they're overly thick and they just look excellent though like they look sharp unfortunately because of how it's packed you can see this taking sort of a little whammy on here but it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be a problem but yeah all of our little markings here everything really looks really sharp and crisp and the carrier film is very minimal so that looks uh, this looks like a really great sheet I will move on to our okay so these are the little like slime lines they call them and then just like a rear view mirror and some other little tiny things it shouldn't be a big thing to uh, work with these it's pretty minimal photo etch which I like and we'll have a look you just have to bear with me for the crunching sounds nothing I can really do about it so we'll put that away and we'll have a look here oh it looks pretty highly detailed I really like the uh, the scribe lines on this they look like they're just sharp enough you can see here 
and then our fuel probe there need a little bit of cleaning up like there's a little bit of flash on it and is this two different bellies it is it's two different bellies so it must be for different variations. I'm not sure if one's for a single seater and a double or what the deal is. It'd be nice to look that up and see. And then our uh, wingtip tanks there. Which pretty much when you see the Canadian ones, they always, always have the wingtip tanks. Like, always. So. so everything looks pretty good. And here's our gear strut. It looks really nice. So I can't complain about anything there. And we'll get this one out. Which is our nose section. You see the pretty nice moldings on there. In the cockpit looks excellent. Like the everything is raised really nice in that cockpit, so and more details. Everything looks excellent there. In our seat. I'm pretty sure these seats are pretty basic as they are. And the instrument panel looks excellent. There's no like dials or anything inside of the I don't think there is. Inside of the instruments. But they look all right, and you've got a couple, like a, I guess it's a mirrored pair for training or something like that. And we'll have a look at the uh, other side here, which looks really good. Flip it over, and there's sort of interior, like there's a sort of detail there for the interior. So it looks all right if you want to leave it open, the canopy. I can't complain about anything there. Here's our seats again. They're just basic. But again, like, uh, not all of these seats have like a cushion and uh, straps and things on them. Sometimes they're on the guy. Like he has his uh, parachute on him and he, before he straps in there. I'm not sure exactly how these work. So we'll move on to, I'll do the glass last. So this looks like our armament. Okay, before I get to those, we'll look at our wings. Here's our pylons. They're all right. We'll have to see if we get like sway braces in that and then our flaps and whatnot. And our wings and how they'll plug in here. Looks good. Our upper wing, you can see there's some rivet detail on there. Well, all recessed rivets anyways. In our wing spire. And so the holes are already drilled there. Pretty good detail inside the, the wheel wells and like where the little brakes and things are. So can't complain there. Everything looks good. Um, We'll move on to our sprue with the weapons, which I'm guessing this is a different style tank than the other one. But uh, you can see the other side of it here. Various little pieces, and yeah, here's our sway braces for the uh, bombs and things. Actually, the Sidewinder looks really good. It looks like detailed just enough, and then our rocket pods, and our wheels are separate from the hubs. These aren't the greatest in the world though. Um, like I would probably, like it looks like a nice kit. I would probably try and replace the wheels with resin ones. Um, but this makes it at least a little more convenient for painting. And then we do get uh, like rails for the wing tips. And there's nothing special about those rails. So move on, we got one more large sprue and then just the glass all right so 
So this is like a, the rear section here. Get the tail. I like how they've done this in sections like that. So you don't have to put the tail on it. It's really nice. And here's the other side. In our nose section, the way it's split, it's pretty good. And it's not really open for the cannons. Here's the lower section of it. And our boarding ladders. This one's kind of warped, but it's not a big deal. And our landing gear. Interesting how it's got one engine in and one engine out. That's a very strange way of doing something. I'm not sure what, why they would have tooled it like that. I mean, I guess if you want one removed for maintenance, but I mean, that's kind of strange. You can see they're very highly detailed on the inside there. And our landing gear again. Like they might be, a, the landing gear might be a tad soft, but still, I mean, it's okay. And then the inside of all the doors look great. You can see the gear doors here. So all we've got to look at is the glass. The glass is a little bit... It, it, it looks like I would I would probably try and buff this out. If you look at the glass, it looks sort of like wobbly all over. It doesn't look like it's perfectly smooth. I mean, that's probably okay if you're doing a late um, aircraft. Like, because they were so old, I'm sure the glass would sort of not be the nicest looking after many decades. But, uh, like, you could probably polish this out because it isn't really... Like, it looks a little bit wobbly, but at least there's no seam in it. And again, the the um, the front piece, like, it, it it's clear, like, it's clear enough, but it's just sort of wobbly looking when you look through it. And then here's our center section. And that looks all right. Yeah, the, the glass, I mean... It could be better, it may polish out, but it, it isn't really that great. But I do like that it doesn't have the seams, so it's kind of like 50-50 on that. Um, I'll grab the box here, and it looks like a, a pretty good kit. It looks pretty simple, it's pretty basic. Um, I don't know if there's anything unique bet um, between the... Uh, CF-116 or like the CF-5 or the uh, American produced F-5 if there's a way you can tell for your variation of whatever you're going to do because there's so many different options in here um, but this looks like a great kit um, and it looks excellent there might be a couple things you could improve to it but I mean really it, it, it does look alright so this is the kinetic model F-5B Freedom Fighter and uh, thank you for watching.